for good morning all of you uh, so today's class will be on uh, nuclear medicine uh, the nuclear imaging involves uh, detection of radiograph uh, radiation from different parts of the body after radiographic radioactive tracer is administered so these images are recorded on a computer or on a film and the nuclear imaging physician interprets the images to make the diagnosis so the radioactive traces is basically as your contrast media that has been uh, injected to the vein which circulates through the body and so what happens is that when a radionuclide is uh, injected uh, the property of the radionuclide is to uh, travel through the whole body and when it is uh, taken up by the body tissues and uh, it is being concentrated in certain areas it starts to emit gamma rays so when there is a more lot of activity or when there is an anatomically uh, strong area so when there is completely there is a different uh, uh, cell uh, growth or a cell uh, multiplication or any other activity that has been detected by these there will be accumulation of these radionuclide uh, tracers and uh, what it does is there it goes and uh, it emits gamma rays so that is the basic um, function of a radionuclear imaging so the difference between a normal ct and an mri is that the ct and mri is an anatomical scan or an anatomical imaging whereas a radionuclear imaging is a functional imaging so that is the difference between a radionuclear imaging and a normal ct or an mri so this is basically to assess the function of an object so it is also otherwise called as a functional scan so what is radioactivity is the spontaneous emission of radiation from an uh, unstable atomic uh, atomic nuclei so that is what is about radioactivity so you have different types of radioisotopes which have an unstable nuclei and that undergo radioactivity just uh, uh, disintegration and this emissions include alpha particles beta particles beta uh, or positrons but positrons and then you have the radiations so basically these are bone seeking uh, analogs of calcium phosphates and the most commonly used radio pharmaceutical is technetium 99 uh, it is also called technetium 99 mpp so what is the basic function then you have a radionuclide generator which is uh, done by the cyclotron or a nuclear reactor then you have a radio uh, radio tracer production which could be by a complex involving a synthetic biomolecules or salts then it is the patient the exposure by the patient is exposed to these radionuclide radionuclides by uh, the admission of uh, this uh, radionuclide in the form of an injection or an iv uh, that is given uh, through the to the body so it is taken up and will begin circulating in the body then you have the radioactive decay which is by radio electron uh, capture positron emission or annihilation and then you have the gamma k reduction that is used by the actors camera or the ring of detectors then you have the uh, image reconstruction that is done by the computer so what are the isotopes that are used in conventional nuclear medicine so an ideal radionuclide sh should have a following property so this is very important it should have a short half life it should emit gamma rays capable of binding to a variety of biomolecules so the examples of radionuclides together with the target tissues or tissue diseases is the most commonly used is technetium 99m and it is mainly used for radionuclide imaging of the salivary glands thyroid bone blood liver lung and heart and then you have the iodine 131 that is mainly for the thyroid you have gallium 67 for tumors and inflammation then you have krypton 81 which is for lung imaging so why technetium 99 Uh, it is most extensively used because it has the following properties as i told you it should be a gamma emitter so the first main priority of the main property of technetium is that it is a gamma emitter this is important as the rays reach to penetrate the body so that the cameras can detect them it has a very short half life which is around 6 and a half hours and thus the amount of radioactive exposure is limited it is readily attached to a variety of different substances that are concentrated in different organs for example uh, technetium uh, plus methylene diphosphonate is in bone then you have technetium plus sulfur colloid in the liver and spleen it is easily produced as when required on the site 
and it is uh, produced by use of a uh, technetium 99 generator or technetium uh, tau or a moly tau is uh, the device used to extract technetium 99m from the source of de uh, decaying molybdenum 99. So how after injecting this technetium 99 into the body it emits gamma rays. So how are these gamma rays captured? Then you have a special device called the C scintillation camera or the gamma camera. So it's a device used to image gamma emitting radioisotopes, a technique known as scintigraph. So these, what it does is these cameras capture photons and convert them to uh, light and then to a voltage signal. The signal is reconstructed to an image that shows distribution of radionuclide in the patient. So what are the components of a gamma camera? The gamma camera is a polymeter, it has crystals, photomultiply tubes, other circuits and a gamma. So the components include uh, polymeter as I told you. So polymeter is made of lead and mainly it is used to maintain the quality of the image. Then you have the spaces between the holes which is called as a septum. Then you have the polymeter which consists of a series of holes in a lead plate which can be used to select the direction of x-rays uh, failing on the falling on the crystals. And you have the polymeter provides an inter interface between the patient and the scintillating crystal. So that is basically about the polymeter. So the basic idea is to have a polymeter which is basically lead. Then you have the crystal. The chosen crystal is sodium iodide with thallium. It is uh, stationary and the crystal transform the gamma ray photon to light photon. Then you have a scintillator that is the crystal which is of thallium iodide. It is called uh, the main function of the crystal is to convert gamma ray to photons to visible light called a simulation. The amount of light proportional is amount of energy that possible. So then you have the photomultiplier tube. Uh, so these are called as uh, photomultiplier tubes or BMTs. So they are the class of tubes that are seen in the vacuum, that are placed in the vacuum and they are extremely sensitive to light. So a photoemissive device is which the absorption of photon results in the emission of an electron. So what is the basic function of a photomultiplier tube? A photomultiplier tube uh, is an instrument that converts light to electrical signals. So a gamma camera contains 37 to 91 photomultiplier tubes. It detects and amplifies the electrons that are produced by photocathode. The photocathode when stimulated by light uh, ejects electrons, the PMT is attached to the back of the crystal. So then what happens is this is the process that is continuously happening in the um, gamma camera. You have the nuclear energy that is inside the radioactive nucleus. Then you have the gamma ray that is emitted from the patient. As in the image you can see the patient lying on the gantry. And what it does is when you inject this radionuclide into the patients, it keeps on circulating and it emits this gamma rays. So these pass through the collimator and they fall on the image crystals that is the sodium iodide. Sodium iodide crystals or sodium uh, crystals that can be acting as an image crystals then that uh, falls on the photomultiplier tubes. Basically, then it is the image is converted from an analog to a digital converter. The signals from the photomultiplier through go through analog to AC converter. Then this component is used to convert the analog information produced by the imaging system so that it is coded in the binary form of binary numbers. In this way, the analog signal is digitalized and used to produce an image by the computer. So this is the basic idea of how an image is formed using a radionuclear imaging or a radionuclear uh, material. So in this case you should be always thorough with what is the commonest uh, radionuclear uh, material that is used, radionuclear that is technetium 99 and why is it used because it's got a very half, very uh, short shelf life that is half life that is T uh, six and a half hours and uh, because it is always stable and it is can, it can be easily produced by using a cyclotron and how and uh, image is obtained from uh, uh, radio nuclear camera, I mean a uh, gamma camera because when the patient emits these gamma rays, it is captured by the photomultiplier tubes and converted from an analog to a digital converter to get the image. So that is how basically a radio nuclear image is generated. Thank you.